just get my visual going in. Right, so I think I'm a little bit early, so we'll just try and get some people on. Wait for some people. If you're on, please say hello or type hello so I know you're there. Um, gonna go through a few things first of what I'm using as well. So we'll just wait for people to get on. Hope you're all having this lovely, glorious day that we're having. Don't forget to type hello if you're watching. So if you're watching, type hello and hi Annette. Hope you're enjoying the lovely weather. Hi Mum. Hope you're okay, see you on the weekend. So if you can share the live as well uh, to friends or groups, if you're allowed to share within your groups, then that's fine. Um, and, you know, to any friends that you might know craft that don't know about us or do know about us, that'd be lovely. Oh, I bet it was Annette. Bet it was really hot in the kit in the school kitchens today. So I'll just wait in there. We go. Quit. We got ten people on at the moment. It's still not two o'clock at the moment. Uh, two o'clock. So. Hi, Priscilla. Um, right, Priscilla. Uh, the volume is okay. Um, what it is, you probably need to turn the volume up on your on whatever gadget you're using, whether it's your laptop, tablet, or phone. Because if I turn my tablet up now, or phone, because if I turn my tablet up now, see, so you could hear me on that. So that is the light going out. So it's probably just a volume thing on your thing. Is anybody else having problems with the volume? So I'm fine. everybody's fine. Gavin's just shouted from the lovely sunny garden that he's fine. So Hello. so yeah. So. Let's have a look. So 3.58. So we're almost time to just get going. Hi Sarah. Right, sound is fine with you Annette, okay. As uh, yeah, it's probably just the volume then on, on Priscilla's gadget. So there's a few things I'm gonna to talk to you about anyway. And one of them is um, the Julie Hickey uh, foilables. Um, when I use these with the heat transfer foils, I tend to get bits of foils that are left. Oh, oh sound is fine with you as well, Mum. Okay, thank you. And. The bits that you get left over are, I'll put this on there, you can see you've got the flowers and everything showing through the blue. So it's all the, the patterns that you get left and some people throw that away. Well I don't throw it away because I can reuse it. So you can see the butterfly was done on this one. Loads of flowers have been done on that one. So it's all about using every piece of that foil, okay? So you're not wasting anything at all, okay? And I think we're not far off four o'clock either. So, so that's what I'm using today. I'm using some of the bits that have already been used with the foilables 
or you might have used them in your foil press or you might have used them in something else but this is how to reuse even all the little bits you've got left of foil okay and this is the card that we're going to make right there you ask for four o'clock by me now hi Jenny how are you yes no problem Jenny you can replay this later from um, from our Facebook live area or you can go to our YouTube channel later as well but thank you for joining us now right so so what we're going to do first I'm going to show you so these baubles have actually come out and I'm going to shake out in the light as well just to see if we can get some shine on it yeah you can see the shine coming up on them so that is all from the the foils that I've used on what I'm going to show you now okay so that is what we're going to do so first things first I'm going to put my card to the side I'm going to bring in a piece of 200 to 250 gram oh good I'm glad glad you're okay Jenny so what I'm going to do I'm only going to be cutting four of these bubbles out and on the link at the bottom of the comments there is lots of there's some dies that are there and that's this one so it's the old Christmas festive collection festive accessories and creative expressions and I'm using the two bubbles from that one and I'm only going to need four so I think I can get all four out of a small piece so this is what you need to do this is literally a double-sided piece of well it's double-sided sticky sheet so we've got these in the shop sticks too um, but some of you might have creative expression some of you might have another make but we've got the sticks two ones in the shop at the moment and I know we've got them and literally we need to peel off one of the sides okay hi Donna so this is a double side sticky sheet we peel off one side and we're going to place that onto my 250 gram piece of paper now this could be super smooth it could be a pearlescent it could be a mirror card it could be anything you want to use but the reason I'm doing it on a plain white is because I'm going to be adding foils to the other side of the sticky okay and because those foils are coloured you're not going to see any of the card behind so so there's no point wasting any colour stuff really because the colour you end up with is the bits of foil so I've just peeled back a little bit of this and you can see it's a little bit shiny and if I put my finger on it it's definitely sticky okay you can just see that shiny bit that's it okay so i am going to be foiling all of that so i won't throw away these pieces first i'm going to take some of the blues first because my prominent color i want is blues so color side up silver side down unless it's a silver foil then there'll be the duller side of the silver to show i'm just going to use my fingers to tap down some of the foil okay and you just randomly put and you'll hear this all pull in and stuff like that okay so this is how you use all the excess bits of foil from your sheet so that's almost all off there I'm just gonna place that over the other sticky bit there and I don't mind getting lines or bits of butterflies or stuff like that with the sticky sheet so again if you want to do a border around the card you can actually you can actually put um, double sided tape down on the, on the edge of your card and take a little bit of foil like this that you have left and multicolour them so there we are that's most of my foil off of that piece now so there's hardly any glue on it. Oh, it's a little bit more there, so I'll use that as well. So this is what I mean by you don't have to waste any foil at all. 
Okay, so that's almost gone there. Okay, so then I've got a couple of other pieces of foil. And this doesn't matter if it's heat foil or whether it's just um, sticky transfer foil. It doesn't really matter really because it'll just take it off the carrier sheet. Now if you haven't got foils, and but you're a person that uses gilding flakes, you can use the gilding flakes in exactly the same way. So you can put your gilding flakes on the back of these sticky sheets. And I'm just adding, like I said, my predominant colour I want to be is blue. So I have got another piece of blue there, but I'll leave that to the end because I also want to add in a little bit of silver. So this has already had some patterns out of it, as you can see. One other bit of blue, a bit of silver. So I'm just going to go in now. And I'm just picking up, just using my tip of my fingers. Just lift the sheet off and on. And start getting bits of silver. Let's see if we can get that to, to show you the silver and the blue. So you can see that. So you can see this silver and blue on there. That's what I want to do. I want to put a bit more silver, get some silver to the edges. The sticky stuff, Donna, is. Um, a4 double sided tape sheets so it's got a white carrier on one side and a white carrier on the other but it's actually perfectly clear it's like a double sided tape but in a big sheet so it's A4 double sided sticky sheet that's okay Annie it doesn't matter if you're late it's it's the taking part that matters <laughs> and you can always catch us up if you miss us so that's all I'm doing, I'm just taking some of these bits of silver, just kicking it around. And I think that's enough silver on that one. And, and even though I've used quite a bit of this silver, there's still more there to use. So what I would do is actually put that aside now, and next time I want to do another sheet, I can just do that. And you can do a full A4 sheet if you want to, with these foils. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of the teal as well. Like I said, I'm going predominantly blues, so teal is a, one of my favourite colours. So the foils I'm using today, some of them are the foil press, some of them are Kaleido, and some of them are ones that have just come with the old Crafters Companion sets that they used to buy in, which were just for the transfers that they used to do, the sticky transfers. There we are. Let's get through that down. And I don't mind getting straight lines in this because I'm going to be die cutting after this later, so it won't matter, you won't see straight lines. Let's get in there, let's get a couple of parts of that in there. Okay, so I think I've got enough teal in there now. But do I want a bit of copper as well? I'm going to put a bit of copper in as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay the copper one on the top. I'm going to run my finger across the whole piece of that foil. I'm just going to tear that off. I'm going to do that as well. And I've got bits of copper in it now, so it's just giving me a little bit of warmness to it. And then you can still tell it's a little bit sticky. Could you sprinkle glitter on the sheet to fill in gaps? You can, but sometimes because of the static that's on the foil, because you're lifting it up, it tends to stick all over. And I'll show you something I've done the other day. I took a sentiment one, and this was the clear stuff. So if you want to do a glitter sheet, you can do that with it. 
okay you can see the glitter sheet there so that's that that's the glitter sheet that was the clean gold foil i put over the top but when i went to put glitter into the sentiment that's in there do you see that that sentiment and you can see that sentiment there when i went to put foil, glitter in just into that sentiment it stuck to the rest of the foil so i would say no maybe a clear glitter would still show the color of of everything in the back that you put on uh, but color glitters i'm not sure i i it'd be it's a trial and error thing because some files on them will take it some won't that's so all i'm doing now i'm just taking that blue but a good question and i'm glad you asked that because i had that piece to the side that i could show you you can't do glitter full glitter sheets with it so I'm just going over now with my solid glue piece. I'm rubbing it all in. And it's surprising why, what sort of look you get from it, it all. And that's that. Now there's still probably the odd little sticky part of that okay but the rest is absolutely fine okay if i do that it'll stick to that now i could keep going with that blue foil keep rubbing it in but it's probably the smallest little parts that are actually still a bit sticky so i might keep missing it so my tip for that Yeah, wild glitters, you can use all sorts of other things on it. Um, so all I'm doing is taking the anti-static pad. You could take talcum powder as well, but I find the anti-static pad is fantastic for this. I just tap it. So it puts lots of powder on there. This is just the anti-static pad. You can see there's loads of powder on my table there. And then you can blow off the excess, but it still keeps foil, uh, the sticky on there. Still keeps some of the powder on there. So take a nice soft cloth and just give that a wipe. And what that does then, it's not sticky at all. But you really do have to make sure that you put plenty of anti-static in there. Okay? Because now it's not picking up at all, look. Okay? But every bit of these foils that I've got left... That I didn't that I use some of I can reuse again on another piece so never ever throw your foils out because you're just going to throw away bits that you can use okay and if I show you that now so it's lovely so we can just see all that lovely foil in in there Okay, so obviously I've already done a little piece because I'm only going to be cutting two of them and two of them, and that's absolutely fine. And again, still not sticky, so that's fine. If you're wary that your dies will stick on to these, leave a bit of the powder on until you finish cutting up as well. Okay, but this should be fine now. It's not sticky at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my two dies. I'm going to take the sidekick. Now the sidekick is a new machine that we've been that we've sort of got in. It sticks nice and well by pushing the handle. The plate size for these if anybody's wondering They're six and a half centimeters wide, so they're six and a half centimeters wide, and they cut eleven and a half. 
So six and a half by eleven and a half. So it's six and a half wide by eleven and a half, and I've measured from because there's a little ramp on these. There and there, I've measured between the ramps, which is eleven and a half. Okay. So that's the size and you can see it cuts into the plates. So we've got two cutting plates and lots of other things with that. So obviously I need to cut my panel down for those plates. I'm just going to take my scissors. It's not sticky at all now because we've already sorted that out. We've already put the powder on so it's not sticky. And literally the cutting sandwich is you cut in plate and I tend to keep one plate for cutting all the time make sure you're not on the ramp part of the of the machine I pop two dies on there and pop the other sheet on top and that's the only thing that confuses me with this is the fact that the handle goes backwards. <laughs> so normally the handle goes, when you're putting it in, the handle goes that way, but it comes the other way on this one. And that has cut that lovely. It's cut it even better than in my other machine that, I, that I've got. And take a pokey tool and you just start to remove the bobble from so I'm just easy easy separating it from the die bring it out because it's that's a quite a fine die and I'll bring that up to show you that in there all my little bits are still in the die so I need to poke them out as well very easy to get out And you think that these are sticking in because you've used a sticky sheet. They're not sticky. See? Not sticky, they'll just come off. And the only reason I'm removing these is because I need to cut another two. And you must remove all the pieces from your die before cutting that. Now you might have small baubles or small reefs or stuff like that that you want to use. You might want to use snowflakes as your baubles. You know? It doesn't say that everything has to be I think has to be a bauble. A snowflake could be a bauble as well. If I bring that up, you can see it's still got all the shine. I get it into the camera. We got the blues, as you can see, a little bit of pink in there. Okay. Thank you, Jill. Jill says, I all love this idea and the internet isn't great here, but enjoying the, watching the techniques. So, there is my smaller bubble. And again, I have to remove all the little bits. So I shall do that. Now, See, I could use a lovely assistant for this, couldn't I? <laughs> There's only a few bits in there, so it's always good to do that. I keep putting my hand to the side because I keep turning, I keep clicking the live so that I can get the comments up to make sure I'm not missing anything.
that last bit out. It's always that one little bit, isn't it? So there we are, so that's that burn. And then I'm going to cut another two. So, one there, one there. Pop that on the plate. Pop that there. I think my lovely assistant has come. So it is stuck down the machine. So you don't want to be watching me taking all that off. So I'm going to ask my lovely assistant who's just come in with his, you know, you just got to take it from the side gently, pull them along to get that one out. Right, I'll take that one out. Have that, and then I'll we'll give you a poke to and to yeah, so don't if you just your camera, he said, Oh, look, oh, yeah, and I almost forgot, but my lovely assistant just told me <laughs> that I also cut two bows. So on this set here, there's a little bow here, so I need to cut two of them as well. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm going to just put the bow on there. So I've still got plenty of space for my bows on that piece. I'm going to pop that through. I've got to be honest, this sidekick is cut in a lot better than the one I used the other night. So there's my one bow, and now I'm going to cut the second bow. Ooh, I hate to stand to curve, so I'm going to go to the other side again. Because so the pressure's so good in this side kick. Just keep turning the plates every time you cut in, and it'll keep your plates straight. And level. So that's all the bits I use now out of that one little bit of foil and I don't need any more so I'm just going to pop that to the side in my bin. Here's my second bow. And then I can do then I can actually remove the side kit by lifting the sticky handle on the side and then go remove and I can do that. Just going to remove all the bits like so. Thank you Gavin, that's lovely. So now I have, well I'll do a problem on this white so you can see it better. I have my four bubbles and my two bows. Okay, so got my two bows. So especially with Christmas approaching, I think maybe I'll start making the cards using these products. Yes, Donna, they are nice and Christmas is fast approaching. Hello, is that here? Has your system made you a cup of yet? I had an early cup of tea today, so, so Donna, Gavin did make me one, but he made it earlier. So there's the baubles on the black card, the white card there. You can see all the shine is still there. So now we're going to go to making the card. So I've done two of those baubles, two of those baubles and two bows. Okay. And I've still got that 200 gram piece of card that I can put another bit of sticky sheet onto. Okay. So you only need little pieces if you're only cutting a few little things. 
Okay, so let's move them to the back. And then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use. So the, the die I actually used there was Creative Expression CD3220, and that was the Festive Collection Festive Accessories. Okay, and that is on our website. So we've done our four baubles and our two bows. Still got loads of the foil left, so that'll come for another card. Hi Caroline. So what I've now got, um, I've used a piece of this on another card. This was A4, this is the pearlescent that we get in. Uh, we sell it per sheet and there's I think about 20 colours at the moment that we've got. Um, but it's a lovely, lovely sort of an oil, oilish blue. I really, really do like that. I've also got an A5 piece of white 300 gram and I've got an A4 piece of 300 gram. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is bring in my scoreboard. Now, it doesn't matter what scoreboard you got, you may have a scoreboard that gives you a half fold A4 and it says half fold A4. But if you've got one with just centimeters on, then what I do is I pop it in landscape on my scoreboard, I push it all the way to the left, and I score mine at 15. And then I flip it and I go from the other side of the card just gently so that it's scored the card on both sides. And then it doesn't matter then whether which way you fold it because you've broken the fibres in both sides of the card. But what you'll find is is one side will always be slightly longer than the other. Now that bigger piece should be the front of the card, so that when somebody picks up a card they can just do that and lift it. Okay, that's a professional way of doing a card. Okay, so that's that. I'm then going to bring in my guillotine. Um, this is one I've had for a very long time. I think we do the tonic one now. Um, just checking my sizes. Yep, so I know I'm cutting it the right way. So I put this in. If it was an A4, it would hang out this way. It'd be landscape. So I'm going to pop that in to 14 and a half centimeters. Push the plastic down to stop the card moving and cut that off. This will come for something else. Turn that piece then so the A5 is landscape and cut that to 20 and a half centimeters. And this will give me a nice little white border around the front of my card. Okay. And then I'm going to take my A5 piece of white card and I'll pop it in so it's portrait. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lovely cutter as well, Donna. Donna said she's got a lovely cutter. She bought her new ones to put in her, in her bag or trolley she takes to Crafty Wednesday. So I've cut that to 14 by 20. Okay, and this is the piece now that I'm going to stamp onto. Okay, so my next amazing tool that I'm going to use is called a press to impress. So for those who don't know the press to impress or haven't got the press to impress, and I know a lot of you that come to us have actually got one. It's instead of using an acrylic block. The lid is your acrylic block and this is your stamping surface. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull that down from the top just a little. I'm going to take my designer boutique from Creative Expressions UMSDB 107 and we've got this and there's all sorts of other swirl stamps you can buy as long as there's a swirl that comes across the top of the card. It doesn't matter, okay? You may have swirls, but this is the one I'm using at the moment. 
It's a nice big stamp. It's a nice big stamp. It's got a little sentiment, keep on dreaming, amazing things will happen. And it's got a couple of little centers of flowers and a couple of swirls and wiggles. And then it's got the big image stamp. Okay, I'm using the big image stamp. I'm gonna place it to the top of my card. I'm just gonna get my head in at the moment, just to make sure it's, there we are. So that's all I'm doing. When you look through your stamp, the edge of where it's gonna stamp is literally on the edge of the paper. So I know there's gonna be no sort of white along the top. Okay, it's actually gonna stamp on there. Now, the only thing I can't work out, because I'm using blues, and I'm gonna give you all a chance, because I'm using blues, I don't know whether to stamp the green like I have on this one, or whether to stamp black. So what do you think? Do you think I should stamp black or green to go with the blue? Anybody got any preference? So if I do half and half there. So we can see what the blue looks like with the green. So I've got two black and I've got a green at the moment. Green, oh, it's neck and neck. Next one in, black, right, there we are. I've got a third black. There we are, okie doke. Black is first. That was the first one to get the three. <laughs> the cheers of joy coming from the garden. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use black then. Okay, and because I've got that stamp, I'm just going to ink that up. So I'm using Nocturne Versafine Clay. Now Versafine Clay is a very juicy, it's sort of an oil based dye based, oil dye based ink. So you can watercolour with them and if you make sure the ink is dry you can also use your alcohol pens with them as well. Okay so I've inked that up, bring that over and I know that I only need to stamp this once. Just put in pressure. And if you've got something like a pot or something like that you can even rub your pot across the top just to give it even pressure and then when I lift that up I've got that nice little stamp there okay so that black is lovely look at that so that's come out really well okay and then what I'm going to do I'm going to spray my stamp with a bit of water. I'm going to take the microfiber cloth I used earlier. I'm just going to wipe that ink from my stamp in there. Clean your stamps a little and they will last you a lifetime. Stamps, some stamps do degrade over time. So if you look after them, they will last you a lot longer. Okay, so I've done that, that's all stamped. And now what I need to do is do a sentiment. So on this card I did, may peace be your gift at Christmas and your blessing all year through. As you can see that's there. Seem to be sinking down the table in there. I'm just going to move up a bit, get a bit closer. Okay. So that is that. So I've got magical Christmas wishes, winter wonderland. I've got the same sentiment again. And then I've got, in this loveliest of seasons, may you find many reasons for happiness. So 
Ooh, yes. Shouldn't have showed that, really, should I? <gasps> Never mind. Sorry. That's it. This is a project that's coming out soon, so... Um, keep your ears out and your eyes out for that. Um, so I think what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to go for something slightly smaller. So I'm going to do magical Christmas wishes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Kita. <laughs> I should have had a different product there, shouldn't I, to rub it across the top. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pop that on there. Just going to use the lines on the grid to make sure that it's stamping straight, and that is. So I'm going to take the black first fine clear again. Hope you're okay, Gator. And then that's my sentiment stamped. Thought that was on the table. And I naughty. I hid everything else as well. Well. Right. So that is that. So I'm going to take that off my presser and press. Other there's other stamping tools that that work with different stamps as well. Um, with a press to impress, if you're using um, a rubber backed stamp, a sponge back stamp, then you just take the, the sponge out of this, which I find it so much quicker. So that's why I like the press to impress. Oh, I'm glad you're okay, Gaydra. So the next thing I need to do is work out where I'm going to put my baubles. Now I found that this little black spot there was perfect for one of the large ones. So I wanted to put a large one over the side. I'm going to put a small one coming off this little bit there. I'm going to bring that down towards the word in so it's in a different level. And then I'm going to bring the large one and the large one is going to come down off this one. So that will go there and you just line up the scent, the top of that bulb to a curl and then I think this bottom one here is going to come off this twirly whirly there. In fact, I might even come off this bow where a branch that comes across like that. So I'm just going to do that. Okay, so I place my baubles exactly where I want them. And how I get my guideline of where they go in is I put a little dot with a fine line pen just at the top of each of the baubles and remove them and now I know exactly where they're going to go okay so large small or large small that's how they're going to go on so you can see that I've got one two three four spots for one spot two spot three spots four spots and I'm just going to bring a ruler or something with a straight edge I'm going to go from my spot to the area I want to go to and I'm going to draw a line down. Okay, and then I'm going to come to the next one. I'm using a ruler and I'm guiding the ruler straight because of the card. So the card is actually straight with that. And then going from there. I'm going from this top one here. Yeah. 
and when I get to the wording I stop at the top and I come from the bottom okay go through the scrolls at the top so I stop on the top of the writing and I come through at the bottom so that's that one just wipe my ruler make sure I'm not removing, removing any black marks I'm using this black line now that I've just done as a guideline to put this one on that's that one and then the last one from the swirl it's good if you can see where you're going as well okay so there's my four lines put that to the side and then I've got fine nozzle glue pot which we sell in packs of two I'm not sure if it's two in a pot or three and I'm then going to use that with my bubble and just put in little dots of glue, little strips of glue. And to make sure there's not too much glue on it, I just tap it onto my hand. And that is going to go. There. I just put my hand on top. If you don't want to put your hand on top, I always take a piece of paper, put that on the top, and then lift that, and there's your bauble stuck on and it's hanging from that string. Then I'm going to do the second bauble, just put in little dots on the little curls. I'm halfway up the curl. And this is just to give me some sticking points so none of it lifts up. Again, just tap on my hand. That takes all the excess off. Make sure my bobble is hanging straight. Stick that one on. Okay. And so on and so on with the, the next two. Tap off the excess with the glue, pop the large one up the top there, make sure it's central, take my bit of paper, make sure that is stuck on, and grab my other one. So I'm now, while I'm doing this, I'm just going to look at some of your comments as well. I know if you've asked some questions, I'm sure Gavin has done that, but I will have a look as well. Yeah, Magical Christmas Wishes is a nice one, isn't it? I thought that was a nice one as well, Donna. I think it goes with the sort of blues. So that's them and then of course I have two bows and I decided to do the bows on the ones that's got the longest string. So I could have put one on each but I've decided to just put the bow at the top. But with the two with the longest string. Just give a chance for the glue to, to grip it, and that's, that's that. So that's that little bit done. I rub the glue off my hands, so now I'll just go into little bowls and go to the side. And then we've got um, some gems then. 
Okay. So at the moment my other pills and stuff like that are actually in the shop. So I did find some of the glossy accents on in my drawer. So I'm just gonna find some different blues. So I've got some darker blues there, lighter blues there. I'm gonna use dots this time. Mm, might even use some stars, there's some nice blue ones in there. Some nice ones there as well. And then I also want to use some light ones. Right, so on this one, I've used stars where there was actually star flowers. There. So I think I'm going to do exactly the same on this one. And then I'm going to put some of the paler blue circles around the bottom part there. Okay. And to get these off, I just use a hockey tool. And I think let's give me darker blues first. And stars, darker stars. So let's show some the stars. So I'm going to take some darker stars first. Some navy ones in there, but I'm not sure if they're too dark, so I'm going to go with the next side colour down. Instead of having the actual flower there, it's going to actually have a few with stars. So I get the pokey tool under the gem while it's on the carrier sheet. That's how I get them off. Uh, there's another star. So do that, and then I'm going to pick a sort of light one as well. The light one I'm going to put next to that one. I'm going to go back with the darker one again. Put that up there. And I think we'll go with the light one again then. Uh, okay. Okay, so there's my stars. And then I'm going to come in around. So I've got some blue up in there. I did use white on this one. But I think this can do with some blues to be honest with you so what I'm going to do I'm going to come in with some very nice blues from this one I think so just a few gems so I'm going to go dark one there so a large one there A medium one about up there. Another dark one I'm going to pop just by the eye. As if it's the dot from the magical. I think I've got a tiny little one there. Which can go down here. And then these are slightly different colours, so I'm going to open this one as well. I've got similar colours there. Yeah. And I'm going to go for a medium one and pop that over there. And I think five is plenty within that. Don't want to overdo it. There's a time to stop. And you have to stop on a I a firm believer that you have to have odds. I'm not evens, plus it's more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So that is that one. So how is everybody? It is very hot, Sandra. Um, hello. So we're going to do some leftover files. And it's time to impress. Yes, very hot, Sandra. Very, very, very hot. I've got two windows open and 
I'm still boiling. And my battery operated fan ran out of power this morning, so I haven't even got that. So obviously I got an A4 piece of card which I put on my scoreboard and scored at 15 centimeters, which gave me an A5 card base. And then took a blue pearlescent piece. And this was 14 and a half wide by, by 20 and a half tall. I'm going to use um, Kalalo Purpose, you can use wet other wet glues, you can use your PVAs because the pearlescent is quite thick anyway, you're not going to see any marks from any glues. Just put that down so that we've got a bit of white around the edge. And then all these blue pieces here. I thought these felt a little bit sticky, but they're not, so that's fine. If you do find that your bauble is a little bit sticky, once all the glue is dry, you can still take your anti-static to that once you've made the card, and then just go over with a soft cloth, and that'll stop it being sticky while you put it in your envelope then. It'll never go again. It's just because it might have been put under pressure with your dies, okay? And because it stretched it and pushed it, it, sometimes the edges can get a bit sticky, that's all. So what I'm going to do with that now is put that onto the card as well. For my all purpose. Okay. And then that'll go there. And for posting, this is a lovely card because the glossies are not too deep they're quite shallow so they've got the dome like a pearl but they're not as high as a pearl so this should just be a standard post I would think and because we haven't put foam pads on that as well that is lovely I love that so same card two different foils and I'm just gonna put my light on as well because it's a bit even though it's warm, it's still not that bright. So yeah, so that was my pink. That was my pink and I had a little bit of purple foil in that. Don't know if you can see it. Oh, there we are. So you can see all that foil on there. Okay. And then this is the blue one. And that's using all sorts of different blues. Now, as I said earlier, you can use your excess foils with double-sided tape as well. So I'm just gonna show you that as well. So I'm just gonna use it on here in this scrap. Just going to get my double-sided tape. This is a finger lift double-sided tape. So I hope you enjoyed that card. Thank you, Annette. Yeah, it's a bit too hot for me at the moment as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do double-sided tape down my card. Done this bit of scrap. I'm just going to take, cut that off. So you could make this as long as you want. Make a border, cut it out, stick it on the card, or do it directly to a card. Okay, so you can take back a little bit at a time. And just to show you, even though I used most of that blue off this one, it doesn't mean that I can't go back in with double sided tape. Okay, I'm add a bit more blue into it, and then I could go in and take my sort of teal colour and if I just want to finish it off with the teal end I can just push that down, rub it down on there okay.
Okay, so that's that, and then I can continue on then and finish the rest of the swirl. And then I can finish off with that. So you could use your red liner tapes, you could use your double sided tapes, you could use all sorts of the other tapes as well. Don't feel that you can't use them because what you get then, you can get a nice sort of border with the same thing as well. So we would match your baubles if I wanted to put a border across the bottom or through the middle. I could do that. I could put a sentiment then over the top on a matte layer so it would match everything that you're doing then. So you can do that as a frame around your card or just a little strip that's going to go through the edge. Okay, so that is something I just wanted to show you quickly. So double sided tapes. Um, the other thing is quickie glue pens or two in one glue pens. If you Put your two-in-one glue pens down up in here. I can you wait for it to dry, which then means it's only sticky, not liquid, and then you can put your foil onto that as well. Okay, but that is my two cards. Hey Deb, you probably just come in right at the end, my lovely. But yep, yeah, so that was the two cards. So the pink one was that one. And the blue one was that one okay and there are all sorts of dyes you can use snowflakes you don't have to use baubles you know you could be using flowers and doing hanging 3d flowers in your swirls which is lovely and you could follow your flowers as well so that is the cards I've done that was the strip I done and just to go back through what we what we did we took a double sided sticky sheet, stuck it onto a piece of 200 or 250 gram card. Oh no, oh you should have kept them mum. Well, it's a note for the future now, never throw out your, your excess bits of foil because they can always use them with your double sided tapes. That's okay, Mum. We'll see you on Saturday when we arrive. Um, so yeah, so just double size the sheet onto a piece of 200, 250, because if you go 300, it's going to be too thick for die cutting later. So put your foils on it, just tap them on, fill it all up, and then cut it and die cut it. And that will give you your baubles and your bows. And then you end up with this lovely sort of card design. So I hope everybody is okay. Don't forget you can still share and like the video and watch the video from our Facebook Live or from um, our YouTube in a little while. Gavin will download this video now and put it onto YouTube for, for future reference. Um, so Thank you very much for watching us and I'm sure we'll be doing a few more lives in the near future. Uh, hope you all have a lovely weekend. I um, know the weather is going to change a little bit but we'll enjoy it anyway. Perfect time to use your excess foils, dig them out, get your double sided sheets and have a good go at making some cards like this. Okay, so thank you very much everybody for watching us. Um, thank you for supporting Valley Craft and all our suppliers because if you buy from us you're also supply, supporting our suppliers as well. So thank you very much, have a good one and we'll see you again soon. Bye!